The House has made it official. President Trump is the first U.S. president to be impeached twice. Now that, that Donald Trump is a clear and present danger to our country, and that once again, we honored our oath of office to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Now that the article of impeachment is signed and the impeachment managers have been chosen, the next step is a trial in the Senate, but it's unclear whether the Senate, which the Democrats will control, will have the two-thirds majority needed to convict President Trump. CBS News political contributor and host of the Article One podcast, Molly Hooper, is with us now. She's here to talk about what is next on the Hill and her interview with a former sergeant at arms and chief of the Capitol Police. So, Molly, let's start first with President Trump. We heard from him last night in a video on the White House's official Twitter feed. The president struck a different tone than he did a week ago uh, at the rally uh, b before the attack on the Capitol. Um, I want to play a clip from that rally and then play one from last night. Okay. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. Our country has had enough. We will not take it anymore. And that's what this is all about. I want to be very clear. I unequivocally condemn the violence that we saw last week. Violence and vandalism have absolutely no place in our country and no place in our movement. So, Molly, uh, first of all, the, this change in tone is because the president's reading off a teleprompter on a prepared remark. Reporters were not allowed into that room to see uh, that uh, video being filmed um, because he knew that he would get some very difficult questions from the White House press corps. He could have very easily walked over into the press briefing room and been given an audience by the reporters there who would have broadcast his comments live, uh, did not choose to do that. So he could read whatever he wants from the teleprompter. The words that he spoke at the rally last night before the insurrection are the ones that Congress is focusing on. But the president keeps focusing on being censured on social media. Um, and, you know, so that's where his head seems to be right now. Uh, why was this address, um, why do you think he had to give this address seven days after the fact? Well, I'll tell you this much. If he had gone to the, the microphones in the White House press briefing room, as, as you suggested, Vlad, and said, end this, enough, we're not for violence, this is a party, party of law and order. Do not, you know, we don't condone violence. Stop. If he had done that, as the as the swarms of people were rushing up the east front of the Capitol steps and breaking into the Capitol last Wednesday, I think that we would be at a different in a different place right now in terms of what the House and Senate are doing to take action against the president. In fact, quite a few Republicans, including obviously those ten Republicans who voted to impeach him last night. One of the main reasons they were so upset with the president is that it took the president such a long period of time to actually call on his supporters and the individuals who were causing this problem at the Capitol. It took that president so long to actually send National Guard and to speak out that that really was their biggest issue. It, it almost seemed as if um, by not saying anything, he was you know, condoning it, you know, not necessarily in words, but, but by not acting was a statement to Republicans up on Capitol Hill that the legislative branch of government was in, in itself under assault, which is why you did see those Republicans break with the president yesterday and with members of their own party. And, and Molly, um, let me just say, you two, in Molly, a tough position. not to interrupt you, but just, just because you're mentioning this, uh, after the insurrection, what did the president say in another prepared video? He told those uh, individuals that he loved them. Um, and, you know, he did tell them to go home, but he said he loved them. Uh, and so now in the statement that he released yesterday, you know, you're hearing something very different. But he could have said all those things. He could have done all those things while it was happening. He could have been broadcast this notion that the president or House members who are wearing, you know, masks that say censored on them, even though they're giving remarks that are being broadcast to the entire country is, is ludicrous. Well, I, I think that that's one of the issues that quite a few Republicans have with the president and how he handled this. Again, in the, remar the remarks before th this riot happened, you know, that, that was one thing. It was president venting. It was going off and he was partially reading from the prompter and he did call for peaceful protests. But on the other hand, he was saying, I will go with you to the Capitol. Let's go. We've got to contest this. We have to stop the steal. And um, that really did rile up a lot of Republicans. 
Republicans on the Hill because, again, separation of pa separation of power um, and checks and balances in this government is is essentially the key. That's the cement that keeps this government going. You've got the legislative branch, Article One, executive branch, Article Two. Judicial Article Three, and they all check each other. And when one branch is calling on, you know, to overturn what the uh, what the legislative branch is doing or the judiciary, that's just not stood for. And especially among institutionalists up on Capitol Hill, who 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 highly covet and guard their power, that was not the right message to send if he wanted to build any kind of support among Republicans on Capitol Hill. And I think that the reason you saw the president come out with the statement yesterday, last night, that was markedly different than what we heard a week ago, is because, you know, we've also heard Mitch McConnell say that he wouldn't necessarily, he's not opposed necessarily to impeachment, that he will listen to the legal arguments. And I think that last, that one of the reasons Mitch McConnell, and this is, this is my sort of reading of the situation, one of the reasons Mitch McConnell said that was to basically put the president on notice that he better mind his P's and Q's over the next few days until there's this tr peaceful transition mm -hmm. of power. Okay, so then that brings us to, you know, a possible Senate hearing. Um, it, so even if there's a hearing, uh, it's probably going to happen after the president has already left. Uh, they still need a two-thirds majority to convict the president. Um, the Democrats will have the majority, but just by one vote. So what is the mm -hmm. likelihood, even with this kind of signaling coming from Mitch McConnell now, who knows what he's going to be saying later, um, what's the likelihood of getting enough Republicans to defect? And what's the likelihood of ensuring that all the Democrats vote to convict as well? Well, well, that's a great question, Amory, and also just how it's going to operate. You have a newly elected president, Joe Biden, who needs to have all of his cabinet appointments confirmed by the Senate, and that takes up a lot of time. But when you have an impeachment trial, impeachment takes this takes center stage and essentially all of the business is supposed to be shut down in the Senate in order to move forward with the Senate trial. So so it's unclear how this is going to work in, in, in terms of the TikTok, but also in order to convict 17 Republicans will need to join the 50 some odd Democrats and vote to impeach. Um, and at this point, I haven't seen too many Republicans coming out and saying that they would do that. In fact, there are a number of Republicans who are saying this is the wrong message to send at this time. We want more unity. This is going to cause further division. And not necessarily that the president shouldn't be punished or shouldn't be um, shouldn't be reprimanded. They could do that with a censure, which which hasn't really been done to many presidents. In fact, I think it's only been done to one. And you know, and take other action, but. Impeachment at this time of disunity in the country is probably the wrong message to be sending back home. Also, keep this in mind. There's 20 Senate Republicans up for re-election in 2022, and Mitch McConnell is listening to those members and listening to what they're hearing from people back home in their states, the ones who are going to vote for him. So, so that's going to be top of mind for him as well. Molly, you interviewed former Sergeant at Arms and former Capitol Police Chief Terry Gaynor yesterday about the assault on the Capitol he talked about creating a commission to investigate what happened. What did he tell you uh, from his perspective as to what happened last week? Well, well, this is fascinating because obviously there's going to be a lot of investigations going on. The House is going to investigate. The Senate's going to investigate. The FBI is going to investigate. You got the MPD. There's all these different investigations going on. But really, in order to get to the bottom of what happened, why it happened, why the Capitol Hill police and the other agencies weren't prepared, you know, and how to prepare for future threats, Chief Gaynor says that something very similar to the 9-11 commission that, that was created after 9-11 to look into an all-encompassing, um, you know, how every different agency interacted with each other is probably the best way to go to figure out how to prevent this from happening in the future. He noted, and, and Terry Gaynor is a great guy, he, he was up on Capitol Hill for more than a decade in the two top roles, law enforcement on Capitol Hill, and, and he, he was very honest and said, listen, the House House and the Senate, they don't like they don't like uh, to take a lot of criticism, and they're going to face a lot of criticism because it's the Senate and the House that pays for and essentially is in charge of operations that the U.S. Capitol Police conduct. And and he said we have to be very honest, own up to the good things, the bad things, and the ugly things, and you need to have a commission 
that is not going to be shy about pulling punches. And it's interesting because since we talked, a number of senators and House members have started to call for an independent investigation because clearly there was a lot of intelligence that was not shared. Uh, Gaynor pointed the, pointed the fact that the FBI branches down here in D.C. didn't know about the threats assessment that apparently the NYPD ha knew and, and they just weren't sharing it. So there's a lot to be figured out here and to move forward to, to deal with a growing threat that hasn't been growing, he says, over the past few years, of domestic terrorism. And that's something that needs to be tackled, you know, ferociously. You know, what's he saying about morale, uh, you know, within the Capitol um, police force? You know, it's all that stuff that you mentioned. And then, I, you know, we keep hearing more and more about police officers from other areas that participated in this insurrection. And, right. you know, they're supposed to have this kind of brotherhood and the, and the idea that, you know, people who understand the gravity of the, what right. it means to do police work would be also instrumental in putting them at risk. I mean, it's got to do a number on your morale. Well, well, it has. And one thing about Terry Gaynor is he has a lot of connection. He's still in contact, of course, with the key leaders in this position. In fact, the former uh, chief of the police, uh, Chief Sun, was Terry Gaynor's chief of staff when, when they were both with the Metropolitan Police Department in D.C. He knows these people very well, and he's, he's friendly with the rank and file. And what he's been hearing is essentially um, that, that they're crushed. They feel responsible for this. And uh, he said of, of Chief Sun that he knows him professionally and personally. He's a good guy, and this is nearly killing him. Now, does that, that doesn't mean that Chief Sun's not going to take responsibility for what happened, but that, you know, the day after it happened, he made Chief Sun, even when he was, um, for all infected persons, relieved of duty, he was down in the Capitol talk at the roll calls of all the different, um, you know, branches in the police department because, you know, he was trying to, to pump them up and to get them inspired and because he saw how profound, profoundly injured these individuals were, again, they feel responsible. They feel like they failed. And the one thing that Ter Terry Gaynor made a point to note was, yes, the Capitol was breached. But you know what? The Capitol law enforcement is there to protect lives. And not one member of the House, not one member of the Senate was injured or killed. Obviously, PTSD is going to be a major problem. But when it comes to physical safety, every one of those members was physically unharmed. And that's saying a lot because on that day, not only did you have the House and Senate in session, but nearly every member was in the chamber because it was such a big day and there was such so much debate going on. So, th so on on that on that on that front, the Capitol Police did succeed. You know, we saw Officer Goodman, who who was able to be agile and move move members of this riotous crowd around. But again, that doesn't replace the feelings that these Capitol Police have of failure and how they how they're regrouping. It's going to take it's going to take a while. And, and Chief Gaynor said to keep keep not just the police officers, but staffers, young and experienced staffers, lawmakers, members of the press who are up and, and, and were on the receiving end of this right. And this PTSD is a real thing and it's going to be around for a mm. long time. And, and he just sends his, his you know, support out for those individuals and, and to support each other because it, it will be tough moving forward. Yeah, well, they were certainly failures, but from what I saw of the Capitol right. Police, uh, I saw shining examples of American heroes and American patriots. Right. Um, and, yeah, right. we will be thinking about them as they sort of work this through. Molly, thank you very much. Thank you. So.